Nice to meet you all of you. My name is Xavier Plo. I will be co-presenting this session uh, with Tony Otin. Uh, this session will be articulated in three different parts. So I'm going to uh, make a kind of overview of the AWS mainframe modernization using Blue Edge. And then Tony is going to present you a return of experience of a project being delivered using this technology. And I will finally make some deep dive into the uh, technical side of that and how we get to the point we uh, modernize an, an application coming from a mainframe. So uh, the AWS mainframe modernization offering is articulated in two main parts. One is uh, refactor and the other one is uh, replatform. Those two different strategies are not competing one against the other. They are two different solutions for two different problems. The one we are going to focus on today is the refactor one using the AWS Blue Edge uh, modernization process. My name is Xavier Pro. I've been uh, working on uh, application architecture for 20 years, 15 years on modernization of application, 10 years on application transformation to cloud, and five years with Blue Edge. And I'm happy to present to you today the AWS mainframe modernization Blue Edge refactor offering. Um, this is the result of uh, 20 years of uh, investment. Uh, we are uh, convinced that uh, you go for the strategy of uh, considering a refactor when you don't want to uh, go for manual rewrite uh, because the specification phase and the re-implementation phase is going to be too long, too costly, because you don't want to replace your application by a product from the market because you don't want to be binded with an editor or the roadmap of the editor. And then you end up with uh, a choice between refactor and replatform. Basically, we can summarize the uh, uh, reason why you will go uh, to uh, refactor uh, by a single question, which is, do you want to go for Java or to keep the legacy language you have and you maintain up to now? So if the answer is yes, then uh, you can consider the AWS uh, mainframe modernization with Blue Edge in order to end up with a modern application as a result of that transformation. This uh, is uh, a process. This is a workflow. This is not just a tool that is going to produce that result. And uh, we focus uh, during this process on all the tasks and the industrialization of the task in order that the uh, process is going to be fluent and uh, the workflow is going to be simple. Uh, the main pillars on which we rely in order to implement this uh, workflow are uh, described in the uh, bottom right corner. So the first thing we will do is to ensure that there will be no surprise in the middle of the delivery. So for that purpose, we will take the code base and we will make an upfront analysis in order to investigate if there is any missing element and we are going to decompose and relearn all the dependencies that compose that application so we can figure out uh, upfront the way or the best way to validate the result of that transformation as well as to implement the process of making this transformation. The second pillar we focus on, and we engage for that, is the functional equivalence. So meaning that uh, this application is going to be re-architected into a different technology, but the engagement is that it's going to behave equally the same as a result, and we are going to demonstrate and articulate the validation process around the fact that the test case uh, that we record on the legacy can be replayed onto the target and produce exactly the same result. The same kind of approach is used for non-functional requirements such as the performance and we engage for um, a result which is going to uh, deliver same or equal or better duration for the batch and uh, same or equal or better uh, response time for the API and the screen-based scenario. The next pillar is on the code base, because as we change the technology and we generate source code, we need to end up with something which is going to be maintainable and which is going to be uh, the baseline for evolving and following the business need. So this pillar is something that we uh, take care of uh, at the beginning of the process in order to uh, define exactly what is your definition of the maintainability in terms of coding style, in terms of naming convention and how we can adapt to your expectation and the result. 
Finally, the, fi the fifth pillar is uh, the test coverage because it's all about organizing this process in such a manner that you can go live with confidence and uh, we get a KPI, which is the uh, coverage of the source code we've been generating using the test case that has been recorded. And uh, we monitor that all along the transformation process that we are going to detail. Um, Blue Edge is the company uh, born 20 years ago uh, as a modernization company. Uh, and the idea at the beginning was to generate uh, source code from UML model. Once this was done, uh, we've been thinking about creating those UML model from existing application, legacy application, in order to implement a change of technology or change of architecture on those application. Um, once we've said that, we figure out that the model we can end up uh, relearning the information contained into the current legacy implementation was not something that can be directly used in order to produce the target uh, state. So it means that in the middle of this process, a transformation process needs to be implemented in order to adapt the first model we obtain to the second one. And this transformation process is exactly what we have now. So we are not making a line-by-line -line transformation. We are making a model-to-model -model transformation. At the beginning, this process was uh, figured out as a tool in order to improve, increase the productivity of a developer doing it. And now it's a fully automated process end-to-end. -end. Also, this is not a tool. This is a workflow, as I said. And the whole purpose, we will see that the uh, critical path of such transformation is the validation of the result in terms of testing. Meaning that the duration of those projects are driven by the amount of tests you need to do on the result and not by the duration you need in order to create the Java application. And the end-to-end -end process is not one single tool in the middle, but an ecosystem of tools where all the output of a given tool is going to be the input of the next one, and they are all orchestrated by a front-end that we will uh, in, in, see in the last part of the presentation in order to provide you a fully implemented workflow, which is going to be uh, something that you need to learn and that you can deliver the transformation process using it. What we sell? We are not selling a tool. We are not selling skills. We are not selling a line-by-line -line transformation. We are not selling a license. What we are selling is the result of the transformation process. The application, so the Java application, which is going to be implemented as a three-tier application on top of the uh, Spring framework, sitting uh, on top of a relational database, and uh, that you can distribute into a multi-node topology over the cloud. This application is going to be capable of exposing any kind of feature in a modern protocol manner. And this modern protocol uh, is going to ease the integrability of that application with the already modern application and the rest of your application portfolio. So what we are targeting as a value proposition with that is the business agility. So we want to get rid of all the dependencies that you get on the legacy with the middleware. We will see that later on in the presentation. And we want to uh, reimburse your technical debts so you can maintain and evolve that application in a more agile manner by implementing DevOps cycles, by putting in place uh, all the tools and ecosystem uh, which make the richness of the uh, Java ecosystem in order that you can concentrate on your business and the evolution and the maintenance of your application. Of course, this application will be deployed into the cloud and we will see that there is a managed runtime environment that we propose uh, in order that you can uh, avoid uh, to get uh, bothered by uh, the complexity of setting up a production platform in the target and also get the best benefit of all the other AWS managed services that exist for quality of service or for operating that application. The offering of AWS is end-to-end. -end. So uh, the uniqueness of our transformation process is that you can consume it from the AWS console. 
It's fully integrated into the AWS uh, ecosystem and it's completely leveraging and taking advantage of the AWS managed service. The first two steps you see on this process are the analyze, which is a kind of uh, um, way to get all the information you need in order to engage on a fixed price for a fixed duration and to deliver that transformation that will produce that Java application having absolutely no dependency on any kind of uh, legacy platform or middleware. Meaning that as a result, you will have, of course, the savings of the infrastructure, but also the savings of the middleware license. You will have the benefit of the managed service in the runtime environment in the target where you will deploy. So you will reduce your operation cost and you will have an ease of maintenance and an ease of integration of that application into your uh, application landscape, reducing the maintenance cost as well. So it's a full stack co cost optimized approach that we have. And that result is going to be something that you can deploy again into a managed runtime environment delivered as a managed service. So meaning that you can provision it directly from the AWS console or the command line. And you don't need to get a team being fully set up and skilled on how to create that target uh, runtime environment for production. All the service you get from the develop, test, deploy and operate uh, step on this process are managed services that are usual AWS managed services pre-configured for Blue Edge. So meaning that you just push your uh, Arch Java archive produced by the transformation process into those environment and they are pre-configured in order that you can make the future maintenance using the develop, using uh, an Eclipse IDE on top of AppStream, for instance. There is no attachment to any kind of Blue Edge IDE. You can also deploy into a runtime in order to execute your test uh, during the transformation process. So the way you consume the cloud during the transformation process is the way you will consume the cloud when you deploy after the cutover and you operate your application. So you're in the cloud from day one of that transformation process, leveraging all this ecosystem. So you don't have to organize the infrastructure to do the project delivery. Everything comes from the cloud as well. Um, I'm now going to hand over to um, Tony in order that Tony provide you a return of experience of a project that we just uh, complete and uh, he's going to explain you uh, all the detail and the reason why they've chosen this approach. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Xavier. So yeah, I'm Tony Otan, I'm president of Jonas Fitness. Um, actually, my first job was a mainframe COBOL developer uh, right out of college, and uh, from there I had various opportunities in the fitness and wellness industry, mostly in technology. Uh, variety of companies and eventually uh, became the executive vice president for Jonas Fitness of research and development and uh, this past year I, I came on as president for the business. So just to give you a little history on Jonas Fitness, uh, we actually started as Check Free, founded by Peter Kite uh, in the early 1980s and for those of you familiar with the financial services industry, Check Free was traded on NASDAQ for a, a billion dollar, <coughs> excuse me, a billion dollar market cap. Um, CheckFree actually invented the online bill pay, direct bill pay system that you see in most of your banks today, was sold worldwide, still using some variant of that in most <coughs> online banks today, excuse me. Um, in the mid 2000s, we had the financial crisis, obviously, and uh, CheckFree needed to find an acquisition partner to help mitigate the, uh, the problems they were seeing ahead, and so they actually got acquired by Pfizer. Uh, Fiserv uh, really helped them weather the storm, and the Check Free Health and Fitness Division of Check Free went to the Fiserv leadership team and said, hey, you know, we really don't fit in with the rest of your business. You're a payments only business. We're a fitness and payments business. Uh, and they agreed. And so they allowed the division to start up an M&A project. Uh, that division went out and found Jonas Software. Uh, Jonas Software is a large, uh, large software company that's a software aggregator has uh, acquired thousands of software companies actually traded uh, under Constellation Software and Toronto Stock Exchange. It was the perfect really marriage between Check Free Health and Fitness Division and Jonas Software because their software for life uh, never sold a software company, neither is their parent company. 
And uh, they're really decentralized, so they just let them do their own thing. So why did we do this project? Uh, the original product at CheckFree was an EFT payment gateway. And our team at JFI still leverages that payment gateway today. And we faced hosting challenges like many of you I'm sure do and constantly having raised rates from our provider. Uh, it currently costs us a million dollars a year to host our, our mainframe gateway. So it's very, very cost inhibitive for the size company that we are. Uh, it was getting really just harder and harder to find talent. Uh, the population that works on the solution was aging out of the workforce and you know we're not the size company at 100 people to start up a mainframe training program and just build our own team members. Um, you know those are the disadvantages but it wasn't just about the disadvantages whenever we started looking at a replacement solution. So that's why we started looking at the AWS cloud and said you know what there's a lot of automation we can take in here we can shorten development timelines and extend really the overall life of the product. So in 2022, we've actually already migrated one application to the AWS cloud, and this is gonna be our second application going into this year to next. And we knew it was the best long-term option for us because of the open source enterprise grade technology that lived in the AWS cloud. The application performance was critical for us because we're meeting banking timeframes and they have very specific windows we had to process within. It's very complex. Uh, working, working in the highly regulated industry, as I'm sure many of you do. Uh, in addition to that, we had technology challenges. We were living with proprietary mainframe solutions like the IBM Vault, and we had to find a replacement for that. So we actually landed with KMS there. It's been a fantastic solution for us for encryption. Uh, and really, I think my favorite thing about this project is this last bullet point, and I'm kind of most excited about it, is the biggest value add that I see coming from this project is for every action that our users will interact with in a CICS screen, we're now getting a RESTful API. So instead of you know, paying a staff member to go through and make changes for merchants or different things in this payment gateway, we can now programmatically do those things from source systems and change any settings, any fees, anything we want to do automatically. In addition, we've got the CI CD pipeline now. So we have a whole suite of automated tests we've brought into the deployment of this application. Uh, so like Xavier talked about earlier, we kind of went through this assessment phase and then we jumped into a POC. Uh, our POC was late last year. Um, truly, our code has been converted for some time now. Uh, you know, we're, we're just going through this process of testing, testing, and retesting. We have to be really confident. There's no faster way for your customers to leave you than not pay them. Uh, so when we're processing payments for all these customers, we have to make sure the quality of this conversion is at the highest it possibly could be. So this was critical for us. We're going through what we're calling hackathons. And really what a hackathon is, is we engage all of our operations staff and say, okay, go tackle the application for a day. Uh, and so they do that all day. We generate all kinds of bugs and findings and all these different kinds of things. We get to turn them back over to the Blue H team, work with us on solving those issues. It's been a lot of fun. In addition to that, um, we've done these migration runbooks. And so we're just constantly doing runbook, runbook testing, working out every single detail, every single step, timing everything. So it's, a, it's, it's an exciting time, complicated time, scary time, fun time, is what we're feeling as we go through this migration. Uh, lastly, and it's not really listed here, but uh, another ad that because Blue Age was acquired by Amazon this year, they have the resources of AWS. And one of the biggest things that we're getting when working with them is they're generating CDKs for our entire environment. So it's not just a code migration, it's in modernization. It, we're getting our entire AWS infrastructure as part of this migration. And it's deployable, repeatable, so now we can set up UAT environments, dev environments, all in really just a click of a button with the CDKs. <clears throat> I think one of the most important things I could tell you is if you were gonna take on a project like this, is keeping your mainframe team engaged. You know, they're gonna be scared. They're gonna feel threatened potentially by this kind of move. And so how do you work with them to keep them engaged as part of this process? I think one of the smartest things that we did, um, and really by circumstance, we just talked to them and said, hey, we need a product owner for this team. Are you interested in becoming a product owner for, this main, for the mainframe EFT gateway team? And so they said, yeah. And so they've been a critical part of writing the stories, and making sure we have each item and tasked out and working with the resources on the team. They're both generating uh, many test cases. Uh, so there's 
lots of test cases we're going through and working with the Blue H team closely. So we're getting like for like data testing on the other side of all of our results. Um, we've, you, you can work with them as QA, you could even train them to become you know, some sort of architect for the application as well. And it's, it's amazing what their knowledge is really gonna save you uh, so much in them. You wanna keep them engaged. You know, help them find the opportunity to be with you in the future. Obviously, there's many reasons why a business might want to do this, and some of it could be cost savings. Um, and sometimes that's people. You don't want to necessarily do that when they have so much experience with your application. For us, you know, the people that work on this product, they've been with us for over 20 years. You know, you don't want to just remove them from the application. They offer so much insight, they just can see things that you won't normally see if you're just not familiar with the application, regardless of what the technology is. They could talk to you about how to troubleshoot it in legacy and develop the right processes for troubleshooting it in production. So I'm not gonna go through and really uh, list every service on here, but uh, there are some interesting things to call out. You know? So we had to find a replacement for authentication and authorization, so Cognito is that solution. Uh, so we've got a fully Angular app for all our CICS screens now. It's integrated with Cognito, and uh, the AWS team was able to help us do that. Um, re really interesting because it was RackF before, and now you know we're using you know JWTs, and it's just it's just an awesome improvement on the way that we can handle this top technology. Uh, all of our containers are ECS serverless. Uh, going from mainframe, now we're running ECS serverless containers. DB2 to Postgres, Aurora. So, you know, we really jumped in, all in feet first on a lot of these technology changes. Uh, KMS, I talked about a bit earlier for encryption, which we've replaced our IBM Vault solution for. So, we've been nearing the completion of this project. And we've been running our gateway in parallel, we just really started running it in parallel, and, and troubleshoot any production issues. So if we have a production issue that comes in on the legacy system, we get to go and troubleshoot that same thing in the, uh, in the modernized system. And it really gives us the opportunity to say, well, our steps to troubleshoot this are now completely different. How do I get access to this data? Does it publish the CloudWatch? Does it take longer to publish the CloudWatch? So we, we get to ask those kind of questions and learn as we go through. So this time is just absolutely critical. And I'm really looking forward to the benefits, uh, not just for JFI, but really our R&D team. They're getting so much professional development from this process, and it's this kind of shift that's gonna provide the best performing application for our customers. Uh, and so, in addition to going from a place where we're having trouble recruiting the talent that we need because they're aging out of the, the workforce mostly, we're now using a modernized application and where people are excited about coming to work on this kind of application. So, you know, when you're a company our size of like 100 people, uh, even though we're part of this much larger entity, it's, it's a fun time to be working with this small software company and uh, you really get to explore cutting edge technologies. So that's what I'm most looking forward to for JFI and our team and our customers. So thank you. Thank you, Tony. Um, I'm going to go now into uh, more technical detail about uh, what we produce and how we get there, okay? The, on the left part of this slide, you get a kind of stack of everything you need to take care when you consider your legacy application sitting on top on a mainframe or an i-series. Uh, by the way, we can transform applications uh, that are implemented in COBOL, in PL1, in Natural, in RPG 400 or COBOL 400 using and following exactly the same workflow and the same transformation engine. What we want to deliver at AWS is simplicity. So it means that uh, we want to give you a uh, more longer distance between the uh, infrastructure and uh, your business and the fact that you can concentrate yourself on your work. So the idea is that the transformation itself is going to be delivered as a managed service, meaning that you don't need to consider a team setting up an environment for doing it, installing the product, going through a learning curve in order to learn how to parameterize the engine and how to teach the engine how to do the work and so on. So you simply provision the environment for making the transformation from the AWS console. The only thing you have to do is to push your source code into this engine and then use the functionality and follow the workflow to do the analysis so we can get enough information in order to engage on the result and for a fixed duration 
and a fixed budget. The second part of that transformation is going to be a creation of that Java application. But it's not the end. You need to validate this application. And in order to validate it, it means that you need a full ecosystem to monitor the progress, to organize the test strategy, and to produce this test strategy. That's why, as part of the uh, features that we are providing to you, out of the box, you will see that uh, the Blue Insight tool is uh, grouping all the features you need in order to do the analysis of your code base, of your legacy application, and to vertically slice it into different uh, component or functional domain that you will be considering in order to uh, set up your validation strategy. So basically, the transformation process is a managed service on which you just have to provision and follow the workflow. As a result, this Java application is going to be deployable into the cloud, and it's going to take the advantage of all the AWS managed services that already exist, and they could be pre-configured for just receiving that Java archive into a runtime environment. So it means that as a result, at the end, you can concentrate yourself on your application and your data, do your business, and make your business growing. For a GSI, uh, an integration company, delivering a transformation project, it's going to be securing the risk or mitigating their risk because they will have an ecosystem in order to do the transformation, which is going to be always the same, whatever is the project they consider, and they will be able to concentrate themselves on the analysis part and the transformation of that application. And as a customer, the, as part of the value proposition we deliver, you will end up with a Java application that you will be able to maintain as any greenfield Java application. Meaning that all the property of the Java application is something that you can consider to leverage in the future for future maintenance or future operation or future evolution of that application. This application is deployable in a very simple architecture, which is uh, on the top of this slide. And uh, it means that the Java archive we produce uh, as a result of the transformation can just be pushed to a runtime environment. And this runtime environment is something which is providing you, out of the box, as a managed service, a complete bundle of plenty of other managed services that allow you to consider this application for testing and operation without bothering about the setup and the requirement you need to put in place in order to get a runtime environment which is at the level of quality that you can expect in order to go to production, taking care about, for instance, high availability or any kind of other non-functional requirements that are required for a critical business application. So it means that you get a service, a runtime environment containing everything you need in order that by the time you validate the result of the transformation, you can just push your data into this environment and do the cutover of the workload. This uh, application that you get is something that is going to have absolutely no dependency on any kind of uh, Blue Edge ID in order to be maintained and that you can consider as evolvable as any Java application, meaning that you can create a new component on the Spring framework of that Java application for implementing a new functional domain, for instance, without any dependency on anything uh, related to Blue Edge. It means that this application can also be maintained leveraging the full Java ecosystem and the way you maintain any other Java application that you have in your portfolio. You can implement DevOps uh, cycles, so CI, CD, CT chains. You can also uh, have the benefit of the managed service that exists in the AWS cloud in order to do this maintenance and implement those chains. Of course, if you want to uh, go with your own Jenkins instead of a managed service, that's fine. You can also do it. There is nothing uh, preventing to do this. You will have the benefit of any kind of AWS production platform. So it means that this monolithic workload that you have with that monolithic application we are transforming can be now a distributed workload 
uh, distributed on many nodes that you will be able to supervise using the system operations managed service that we provide, but also get the benefit of the elasticity of uh, the EC2 and uh, the automatically uh, scaling, horizontally scaling uh, property of that cloud. So you can concentrate yourself on your application, your data, and innovate. Innovate by integrating that Java application with some other services in order to expand the capabilities in terms of functional scope of that application by integrating with mobile service, by integrating with BI service, by integrating with stream service, and so on. So it means that this application is now the new baseline for considering your future and the way you are going to implement your business needs. So this is really what we sell, the result of the transformation rather than the mean to do it. But, as I'm talking about mean, how do we get there? We get a process. So this is a kind of standard process. It's always articulated in uh, three main phases for if we consider the testing, and I'm going to explain the detail. What you need to get in mind is that by the end of every single step or phase, we get enough information in order to engage on a fixed price for a fixed duration on the next step. Everything we do is delivered based on milestone, based on deliverables that are fully described and that we agree upfront, and we will get paid because they are validated. So you are not buying a mean, you are not buying an expertise or workforce, you are really buying the result of the transformation. The assessment, which is the first phase, is not going to be a, an assessment like you could uh, have experienced them uh, in some other project. It's not going to be something having uh, a duration measured in months. It's going to be something that we measure in hours or in days. Everything is automated. The assessment, the purpose of the assessment is to get findings in order to leverage the confidence of our customer. The customer could be the final customer, being the application owner, or could be the GSI company delivering the transformation. So this assessment and the purpose of that assessment is upfront to, be, to give us enough information so we can present to you a ROM estimate for both the duration of the project and the budget, so that we check that we are in the ballpark and we can continue. The next phase is the calibration. You can figure it out as a kind of setup phase in which we are going to organize everything so we get industrial. So by the end of the calibration phase, we will have everything automated, meaning that we can consider the transformation will be 100% automated. No manual processing. No touch of the generated source code by anyone or by any, for any reason. The source code is generated, plus the target schema, plus the migration script, plus the build script, plus the packaging script, plus the deployment script. Everything is generated, you compile, you package, you deploy, and you test. No manual steps. This calibration phase is embedding a POC. A POC is not a demonstration. It's the first step of the project. So the POC is there in order that you can look at the result, figure it out, figure out uh, what is the output of that transformation process, and propose some adaptation. So we converge with your expectation, with your requirement, in terms of future maintenance, in terms of reduction of the duplication of source code, in case the source code was generated by Packbird in COBOL or by a framework or whatever, and to meet and converge with your uh, requirement for this application and to consider it as something that you will maintain and you will make evolving. During this calibration phase, we are going to also concentrate ourselves on defining the acceptance criteria for this project. So meaning that we are going to describe the target integration architecture, we are going to describe the maintainability, I just said it, and we are also going to go through all uh, the steps in order to validate that result. It means that during that calibration phase, 
we will decompose your application in vertical slice, considering each of the features as an entry point and grouping them per functional affinity or technical affinity because they share the same resource, and build them into work package that will be ordered in order to build the test strategy. That test strategy is going to be what we follow for considering the mass modernization and the mass testing phase before we can do the cut over of that workload. So the calibration phase is there to prepare everything and to give us any information we need so we get no surprise in the next step. So by the end of the calibration, again, we engage on a fixed price for a fixed duration for the mass modernization. And by the end of the mass modernization, you will end up with a complete application being fully modernized and having all the property I just described before. And that application is going to be handed over to the testing team. The duration to get there is something which is very short. It means that we measure that in weeks or months, and then the full duration of the project is going to be the one of the mass testing, meaning that it's going to take more time to validate the result than it takes to produce the result. So the duration of a mass testing phase is measured proportionally to the number of features and the complexity, the functional complexity of your application, plus the number of interaction point you have with the rest of your application and landscape. This validation, uh, this mass testing phase is going to be composed of the validation of the application itself. So we compare them by recording test case and we provide some tooling for doing this on the legacy platform or a copy of the production platform. And then we replace them automatically into the target. And it's going to be done in an iterative manner. So when a part of that application is fully validated, you can consider to start the uh, system integration test and to migrate the live data and to uh, do the here or so in order to prepare the go live and the cutover. So this uh, process is not done manually, as I said. Everything is automated and we don't want to get complexity. We want to get simplicity or complexity with simplicity because the transformation process is technically complex, but the validation process needs to be monitored and organized. So in order to do the code base analysis and to automate it, we get the Blue Insight tool proposing a list of features that allow you to first do the estimate in order to propose the raw order of magnitude for the duration and the budget, do the automatic classification of the artifacts, so you push all the source code without taking care about anything, and the tool is going to look into the content of every single file and determine whether they are a COBOL module, whether they are a PL1 program or whatever, or a copybook, and classify them automatically, and at the same time calculate their cyclomatic complexity so that we get the technical complexity of that project. The Dependency analysis is very important because we always define a transformation project as a functional scope. So we ask the customer, the application owner, to define the list of uh, batch jobs that are uh, scheduled in the central scheduler, to define the list of API that are exposed by the gateway, the list of screens that are used by the end user. This defines the scope of the transformation. From there, we look at the code base we receive and we check that nothing is missing according to this functional scope. And we also check that we don't have too much according to this functional scope. So the first step of the project will be the pruning of the code base by discarding the unnecessary part of the source code we receive because they are not used. After 30 or 40 years of development, you might have plenty of source code which is unreachable because it's not used or triggered by any functionality anymore. So this, the dependency analysis is also there in order to relearn all the dependencies of the artifact that compose that application. So which COBOL module is calling which one and which COBOL module is accessing which view, which tables and so on. So that for a given functionality, we can extract the graph and the list of artifacts that are required to be transformed in order to test this functionality. But also to define the test case that goes with that functionality uh, as a data set, the list of tables and views, plus the scenario that goes with it. This is the way we start to build the, uh, the testing strategy. 
This application has been decomposed and you can also, by this time, use some features in order to recompose it. So I said that the first recomposition could be by grouping the features together to build some work package and then to build the test strategy. But usually, the way you build this is very close to the way you will consider the packaging of that application and the distribution of that workload into the multi-node topology in the production environment later on. So it means that as you group things per functional affinity or technical affinity, it's also the way you are going to package them. So define that some node will be dedicated to batch or to online, that some uh, uh, package will be dedicated to a functional domain and not some others and so on. So you will distribute your workload according to your business needs and the way you want to organize your production platform. The um, timeline that has been defined there is going to be the breadcrumb that we follow during the transformation project. So it means that the tool is going to monitor the transformation progress automatically with predefined dashboard and by rolling up the result of the test case that has been executed by the CI and automatically check using the AWS Blue Edge Compare tool in terms of result check. And that result has been rolled up into the tool, so you get your dashboard up to date and you are not going to play the PowerPoint or the Excel spreadsheet to go to the steering committee. You simply share the screens that the tool is providing you. So we want you to concentrate on the validation of that result and on to the result of the transformation. So that's why the tool is there, in order to simplify the life. You don't need to be an expert of a mainframe platform to process this transformation. You just need to be someone being trained on the workflow and being skilled on the target. And the target is a Java application that needs to be tested. Once you get your transformation strategy in place, then what you uh, can envision is to uh, uh, start to do it. So as we said, we have organized the application scope as work package. So you can consider that the first work package could be the POC scope, and you are going to transform that. So you just go into the tool, select that work package, and send that to the transformation engine, which is in an ecosystem called the transformation center. The transformation is going to be reduced at three single steps. You don't need to have someone being skilled on how to install the tool, what are the requirements, how to do the setup and the parameterization, and how to play the tool and so on. It just selects the source code, automatically checks the dependencies and proposes you to add the elements that are required in order to be able to execute what you want to modernize in the target, and then send it to the transformation engine. So the first step, symbolized by the word transformation, is exactly what I explained to you at the beginning. So this is a model-to-model -model transformation. This is an architecture pattern to architecture pattern transformation, following the life cycle I described, relearn the information contained into the artifact we want to transform into a first model, transform that first model into a second one, which is going to be suitable for generating an object-oriented application. Then, once we get that second model as a result of the transformation, we can go to the generate. And generate is just about screening that second model and applying the uh, forward generation templates in order to generate the source code that you will compile, package, deploy, and test directly without manual. Any step is not going to be manual. In the middle, between the transform and the generate, you have the refactor. So this is certainly the most important point in this transformation approach and the most valuable part of it. Because the refactor is the ability that you have to inject into the process your own ad hoc refactoring in order to get a better quality as a result. So for instance, you want to decrease the duplication of source code because the input you receive is having a poor duplication or a very high level of duplication, and you want to reduce that because you want to get back to the level of productivity you had with your PackBase application before you generate the Cobon that has been transformed. So you want to refactor again that application or any other kind of generator. So you want to take care of the macro, you want to take care of all those things. 
So then you will be able to inject a script here, which is going to be specific to your project in order to increase the result and the quality of that result. Also, any application cannot just consider that the tool out of the box is going to transform 100% of everything. Because you have developed a C++ or an assembler library, which is called by uh, some COBOL module, for instance. So we need to teach the tool how to recognize this pattern and how to map it into the target. So again, it's going to be an ad hoc refactoring script that is going to enrich the transformation process. So as a result of what I'm describing, you get the adaptability of the transformation workflow here. So the fact that we can adapt the generation with the template in order to cope with your coding style or your naming convention and so on, but also at the refactor level, because we can inject into the transformation process some specificities or take care about your specificities of your project and your application so that there will be no manual operation after we generate the source code. In case something is wrong, we go back to the transformation process and we take care of it here and we regenerate again. So this is the transformation center. The transformation center is accessible through the Blue Insight front end as a simple front end where you just need to learn what to click and how to behave in case of an issue. But the idea is that you don't need to be an expert of the mainframe or an expert of the transformation itself. You just need to know what you want to obtain as a result of the transformation in terms of Java. Once your Java source code has been uh, generated, so we said now we should consider to test the result. And to test this result, you have the complete AWS predefined ecosystem made of the develop part, the testing, and the operate part. So it's all the environment you need in order to build, package, deploy, and run this application for testing. And as I said, uh, at day one, you are already in the cloud because you will operate the transformation into the cloud, but you will also deploy the result into the cloud for the testing. So the way you are going to test this application is going to be equally the same way that you will deploy this application. So if it works in this environment, as this environment is standard, and as this environment is a managed service, it's going to be the same result for the future production environment. So all those things are there in order to ease your life so you can concentrate on the migration of the data, on the packaging of the source code, on implementing the CI for considering the automation of the test. And as all the tests will be automated, you will have the capability to uh, hand over the regression testing strategy and the regression testing uh, test case and uh, scenario to the future maintenance team so they can operate the same way that you've been operating during the transformation process for making the evolution and the future maintenance of that application. So it means that we consider the cloud as delivering you not a service plus some expert playing the service or delivering the service, but as something that is uh, provisionable from the console, from the command line, and you can consume uh, as you need in order to execute your test. How to engage? You can contact the AWS professional services and has them to work the way I've been describing, or you can go to an AWS partner. So the AWS partner are GSI companies such as Capgemini, Accenture, uh, Infosys, uh, Atos. So they are all the partners that you know. So they are all in place in order to be able to deliver the same result as the one I described. They will be using exactly the same ecosystem, exactly the same tool. You will have equally the same result in terms of quality, and they will follow the process I just described. In order to get there, we get an accreditation program in place where the individual are working with us in order that we can teach them <coughs> the process, the workflow, 
and how they can organize themselves as a practice in order to deliver this kind of <coughs> proje project. So the engagement is going to be the same, always focusing on the result and the added value of the result of the transformation process. Now, I'm going to switch to a completely different uh, part of the presentation, which is also a kind of complement of what I just said. So, we said that the analysis, the transform, and the testing are part of those projects. The analysis and the transform is fully automated and something that you can get from the console as a managed service in terms of environment, workflow, and so on. Uh, the testing is something that you can organize and also in terms of environment and so on. But in order to do tests, you need some data. And uh, those data uh, sometimes uh, are something which is complex to get from the legacy environment. And as we don't want to be intrusive, it means that we need to get some uh, test cases that are recorded on the legacy platform as a copy of the production platform and then delivered to us as an input. And in order to simplify the transfer of the data set required for the purpose of uh, playing some test scenario, we have developed some partnership with some company where uh, you can have a local agent on the legacy platform taking care about the collection of the data and delivering them all over to the environment where you want to run your test case and your data migration into the target schema in order to run that test case. So for that purpose, uh, we get something which is new. So we get a partnership with Precisely uh, for data replication. The type of use case we can develop with that, uh, this partner is also uh, about the uh, migration of the real production data to the uh, future production environment. Uh, because sometimes we get very high volume of data and the time we need to consider in order to migrate every single record, for instance, is going to be too huge compared to the downtime which is acceptable for making the cutover. So this way we can have the data migration being organized uh, and anticipated weeks before so we migrate the full volume and then on a daily basis, for instance, we just receive the complement and the change that has been detected by on the legacy environment. So the target and future production environment is up to date minus 24 hours, for instance, of change. And it means that we are securing the transformation process up to the cutover, including the work, the transfer of the workload onto the new production environment. When I said during this presentation uh, that uh, the transformation process is something that we consider iterative and we can decompose an application, this has nothing to do with the strategy you want to migrate the workload. Okay. So the result of a transformation is always a validated application where all the features are ready to receive a, a workload. And the way the customer is going to migrate the workload to production is something that depends and relies on the business requirement. Meaning that you can consider you will migrate the workload by domains, functional domains, saying, OK, I will go with my batch first and then my online later. Why not? Or I will go geographically, migrating some part of my country as a pilot, and then I will make a generalization of that if it gives me a satisfaction. Or by mixing both together and saying, OK, I'm going to start with a small part of my business, considering some end users, and then I will generalize that to the rest, migrating, maybe, why not, bit by bit, the data, meaning that I want to migrate all the data that belongs to this subsidiary of my organization. And if it works as a pilot, I will migrate the rest of the data. But all the features, all the functionality of the application are already validated and deployed in the target environment. So this gives you uh, all the information about uh, how we can leverage this kind of partnership in terms of deployment. Uh, in order to consider how I can go live without making a big bang.
if you want to get a hands-on approach, you can go this afternoon to the uh, session which is organized where you will be able to experiment and play yourself the tool uh, from the load of a legacy source code into the tooling up to the transformation into Java and its deployment into the AWS runtime environment I've been describing, meaning that you just push your archive into this environment and you can play your application. So this session is uh, today. Uh, it's in the uh, MGM building and uh, Jean-Luc in the room here is going to uh, run that with uh, Jan for your best pleasure. Thank you and I was happy to present to you.